There's a transformation happening in the B2B buying experience. So what is it? And what do we need to know? Facilitating this knowledge stream is Kevin Asher. He has over 20 years of sales and marketing experience, and he helps companies win by modernizing their sales force to become more awesome with technology and technique. Welcome, Kevin. Welcome, Gene. It's great to be here. So theme number six, surviving a modern procurement environment. Tell us what this means. Well, we're taking the buyer's point of view most first and foremost in this week. All of our previous themes were really centered from the sales perspective, and we're going to turn the tables around this week. Good. So your panel had a lot of great thought leaders. Uh, tell us about the diversity of this board. Yes, so we have literal geographic diversity. We've got Europe and Australia represented along, of course, with the U.S. and a little bit of Canada. And in particular, we have a lot of past professional buyers and procurement professionals. So a very lively group, very excited and lots of counterpoints. And while we don't get contentious, that's not our style. There was lots of healthy debate and difference in perspectives. It was very fun. So, Kevin, I'm looking at your executive summary, and it looks like Distant Thunder is about staying relevant. Is that right? It sure is. And basically, the, what was so interesting is the different perspective between both sides of the table of where they each thought of their own place in the equation and their counterparties. Technology has it's been consistent throughout all the themes, has, has changed this game and we're going to go into a bit more depth and in particular what the buyers expect now than what they did just even a year or two or three years ago it just rises dramatically and yes the cold hard fact is you're either meeting and exceeding those expectations or you're getting left behind and so we're going to go into more depth about really how you do that and how you win in this increasingly competitive environment in virtually every industry so explain key point number one, which seems to question the authenticity of partnerships and strategic suppliers. Boy, buzzwords. Yeah. In the end, between these two quotes and the more in-depth conversation that we had on the panel, strategic supplier and partnership, they are real, but kind of like the, maybe I don't know if it's the bald eagle, but they're becoming more rare and scarce and becoming on the cusp of becoming endangered species. So they are high lofty goals that are attainable, but only by a select few. So partnership strategic supplier require true differentiation and the buyer and procurement's perception that you are higher on the value chain. And so again, not every company can legitimately claim that mantle, but those that do will enjoy incumbency for a long time. So high bar, still reachable, still real valuable terms, but boy, just like anything else, there's a lot of fakers out there. And was everybody in the panel pretty much uh, in agreement on that point? Yes, I'd say this is one that we had wide consensus and these top two quotes were far and away the most voted up. So yes, there was, Unlike some other parts of the panel or past experiences where there's a wider distribution, there's a lot of consolidation behind these points of view. So in key point number two, it kind of points out that technology may be your number one salesperson. <laughs> and it's, it would be easy to reach that conclusion. So Primo put some great stats and quantification behind how much people are doing research online. And so, okay, we now have more educated, informed buyers coming in. And then you couple that with the second point from Femida that there's a lot more, the entire transaction can be done online. And so the whole point is to add service expertise that can't be done online. And where I keep going back to as a, an example from my history and experience with Femida's point is when Google first launched search advertising. Advertisers really, for the first time, I mean, there were, a few, there were a few existing products, but Google clearly popularized. You could go and buy your ad campaigns completely online without having to speak to anybody. But yet Google had an enormous search sales team. 
And the reason why they did and why big advertisers really value that team is because those salespeople were experts in how to make the most out of that product. And if you're in, in help the advertisers leverage every last dollar that they were spending on, on Google. Mm -hmm. And so that to me is one of the prime examples of even if everything can be done online, doesn't mean that buyers still want to be left alone completely DIY. And so that's the standard that we need to hold ourselves to because if you can be automated and if you can be replaced, you will be replaced. It's not a question of if, it's only a question of when. So we know technology is changing a lot and that seems to be changing the customer a lot. Tell us about the new expectations of the buyers. Well, gosh, when I got into online ad sales, so advertising, like many other industries, we're done through socializing, entertainment, travel and entertainment. You buy, your first goal of a salesperson was to be liked, become their friend, they'll buy from you. Those days are virtually extinct because even if your best friend wants to buy from you, they're accountable in more ways than ever before. And so like Primo and Dan are mentioning, they have to do their research. They have to be more informed. They have to be able to justify every purchase to others within their organization. So again, they're doing more research. And in general, they're finding that sales is not stepping up in adding value to the process. And we went into a lot more depth into the discussion about the trends and the details behind these different statements by Primo and Dan, but ultimately buyer's expectations has changed and the minority of sales teams have risen to meet those because they're doing the same old, same old. Showing up, throwing up, product pitching, demoing without context, again, asking rote questions, not really listening to the answers and ultimately not helping the buyers be more awesome at their job which is really in the end what we as B2B sellers need to do is how do you make your counterparty on the other side of the table more excellent, help them be better buyers and ultimately help them be better at what it is they're tasked with doing. So Kevin, I'm looking at the survey and I'm wondering what has happened? <laughs> what is, tell me what this is about. This looks weird and ominous. It does. It seems like we're living in a perceived state where the pendulum has swung the other way. If before the rise of internet technology, e-commerce, then the buyers held the cards because they had the info and buyers were reliant on them. Now I say the perception has changed and I use perception deliberately because what I find somewhat depressing is that there were zero people <laughs> who found that the seller has the tip of the balance. And so what that means is we're going in with the mindset that we're one down. And it makes sense why for all the reasons that we just discussed. But again, your product is just one part. You as a seller can be smarter about your industry, be smarter about your client, be smarter about how you use your product. It's not the best product wins anymore, it's the best sales experience wins. And so for us to be entering these interactions with the mindset that at best we're equal, but in more often than not, we're unequal and we're below, that's a dangerous place to be. And it doesn't have to be that way at all. Wow. So your panel went back and forth a lot, a lot of great contributions. Tell us about the three experts that really stood out for you on this panel, Kevin. So David, Primo, and Fumita were there virtually every day, make, uh, contributing new, new thoughts, commenting, cross-commenting, and they really formed the tone and set the, and created the flavor of this panel. And I'm extremely grateful for their contributions. And it was just a delight to be interacting and having them contribute so much. Well, I think you provide a great leadership here, Kevin. Thanks a lot for leading the panel, facilitating uh, all these different ideas, keeping it going. Is there something we can look forward to in the next theme? Yes, the next theme is all about meetings, that key <laughs> point in the process when buyers and sellers directly interact. What do great meetings look like? How do we ensure we have great meetings? 
And basically, is there such a thing? <laughs> is there such a thing? In the end, ultimately, I'm on the seller side. It's yeah. our job to deliver great experiences, and we have to up our game. And so next week, we'll start getting into a little bit more detail of how do we up our game when we're sitting literally or figuratively face-to-face -face with our prospects and clients. I love it. Kevin, thanks a lot for walking through the slides with us. We appreciate it. You're very welcome. Looking it's Kevin Asher. He has over 20 years of sales and marketing experience. He helps companies win by modernizing their sales team to become more awesome using technology and technique. And we'll talk again, Kevin.